Hey, hey, this is director, producer Alan Wills, and I am on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Royce Live. And when I'm online, I listen to Jerry Royce Live at www.freaker.com backslash positivepower21.org, y'all heard. Live Worldwide Podcast. Hi, if you're struggling with your relationship or you just can't seem to find the right one, author Gerald Manuel has written an enlightening new book entitled How to Identify Your Spiritual Soulmate. You may order a copy today from Amazon.com or at BarnesandNoble.com. This book is sure to answer many of the questions you may have. Thank you and God bless you. Hi, this is William E. Benston, owner and founder of Sector 7 Inc., and I'm on Jerry Royce Live Worldwide. You are listening to PositivePower21.org with Jerry Royce. What up, it's your boy Kano Kingston. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. Hey, this is Pat. Hi, I'm Teresa Powell. Hi, Jerry. This is Iowa Sandro Carter. Hi, this is Paul Powers. Hello, this is Teresa Bobby with Jerry Royce Live. Hi, I'm Phil Burn. I'm live on the Jerry Royce Show. Hi, right, what are you doing? This is Boy Who's the Same. Peace, this is Dolly, the poet, spoken word artist. Hello, this is my Marquise with Jerry Ward Live. All right, all right, everyone. we got Robin Lynn, and I'm keeping it live right now on Jerry Royce Live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? This is a war-winning podcast with the greatest podcast on earth. Thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Jerry Royce Live Worldwide on Internet Radio. Where you get your positive on. So when it's all positive, it's all power. That's positive power. This is a worldwide podcast for growth, wealth, and success. Thank you. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the Green Hills of Western New Jersey inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Harding, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse, a suspense thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us and welcome to PositivePower21.org. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power 21? I am Jerry Royce Live. I am blessed. I am worldwide. And before we bring our guests on, because this is episode 375, I just want to read Philippians 4 real quick to you. Verse 6. 
Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs, and don't forget to thank him for his answer. Amen. And ladies and gentlemen, tonight on episode 375, we got Sector Incorporated. That's right, we got William E. Benston, the third founding owner. That's right, born right here in Maryland. Can't say Charm City, he didn't luck up to come over here, but he's on the other side of the bridge, but that's all good. But before we bring Mr. Benston on, let's hear a word from our sponsor real quick. And it's Angel Sessions out of California, the Bay Area, with her new release, Jesus Coming Soon. Hold tight, everybody. Enjoy this cut. Don't be late. Give it up. Be strong and lift him up. Cause he's the power of life. Lift him up. Train away. Train away. Train away. For this the last day. Don't look to the right, right. All right, everybody, welcome back to Positive Power 21.org. Don't forget about the radio, the radio cast right here on Positive Power 21.org. And we just introduced a little bit of YouTube for you. That's right. We have a playlist sitting right out there on the, the website. So anytime you want to go out there, just click it. Check out some of our live broadcasts right coming out of some of the churches in the Maryland area. And we have Apostle Sam Adeyemi on there from Holy Mount International Church up there in Greenbelt with Senior Pastor Bamadella Dello. Bello. That's right. Check it out, y'all. It's a good interview with uh, with the Apostle. All right. Tonight we got William E. Benson III, founder of Sector 7. We're going to tell you a little bit about Sector 7, the second half of the show. But the first half of the show, we're going to get to know William E. Benson. His bio say he's the founding owner, was born and raised in Maryland, he credits his mother and paternal grandparents for instilling in him the principle of discipline, strong values, and the importance of work ethics at an early age. Growing up, music heavily influenced William that influenced birth a passion. After graduating from high school, he moved to Los Angeles, California with only $800, a dream, and an undetermined ambition to make his mark in the music industry. Opportunities in Los Angeles led William to New York to work with Rockefeller Records. While in New York, he was introduced to a 35mm camera and discovered another creative medium, photography. He began an intern with an experienced cinematographer, mm, cinematographer, I'm sorry, receiving training in film production, directing, editing, and end up training he received allowed him to fine-tune his craft and William has merged the go-to guy and videographer in the urban music industry as a videographer. William has filmed music videos with all the top people, commercials, I can mention you name it. And we're not going to name all the people in mainstream, but he hit all the big names. That's right. They were top, top killers. That's right. They was blowing the, the top off the music industry. Now, he's going to come in here and tell us all about how he got started. Ladies and gentlemen, William E. Benson III. What's going on, sir? Welcome to Positive Power 21. Mr. Royce, Mr. Royce. How you doing, brother? How you feeling? I'm excited, man. I'm feeling good, brother. Good day. It's a good day, man. Especially we get have an opportunity to have a Merlin there on the show, man. Cause that doesn't happen that often, man. I don't know what's going on with our people. Where are they? What happened to them? Oh, good. Yes, All right, Wayne. Well, the first question is, man. It's, it's our signature question. Who is William E. Benston the third? Oh man, you hit me with the tough question first, huh? We <laughs> <laughs> see here. Well, you know, I guess. I'm a filmmaker. I'm a father. You know, I um, I love my community, and I think uh, that about sums it up. If you want to, in a nutshell, you know, that's pretty much who <laughs> I am. 
<laughs> no, man, your, 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 your bio's about half a page long, man. Yeah, <laughs> That's I know. what you're going to give I know, man. I'm giving you the you 50 forget. cent tour. I guess I shouldn't be doing that. But um, yeah. really, man, I'm someone who loves the art of cinematography. Uh, I have a passion for entertainment, and I've always had one since um, since I can remember, actually. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I was just always fascinated with every aspect of the entertainment game, starting with hip-hop and just moving right into the, the visual part of it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, this is my career expanded. I got into graphic designing and um, and the music, you know, mixing music, I, you name it. So it's like a all-around type of journey. And, um, and you know, I'm someone that really, really loves the Lord, and I try to do what it is that I feel mm. my calling is. So, you know, I, I guess in a nutshell, that's really who I am, man. That's who I am. Yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. That, that's what I'm talking about, William. Now, William, we got a chance to talk for a very long time, you know, a couple of weeks ago yeah. before I went on vacation. <laughs> so I'm a different person <laughs> now. But uh, um, we found out that we, you know, we, we pretty much uh, ran the same stomping grounds, you know, in, uh, on the eastern shore of Maryland, some of the most uh-huh. beautiful country anybody want to see. You had an opportunity right. to grow up there, man. You got a chance to play on the sand lots. You got a chance to, you know, you know, venture into your music. But you know, I know I, I tell people all the time, it's not a whole lot to do once you get past farming and and taking care of your, you know, the farm and everything. But but to fall in love with your hobby, you get a chance to really home into right. your your craft really early. Tell us a little bit about your beginning, man. When you know before you you left, you know, Maryland to California. Well. You know, I'm from Cambridge, Maryland. You know, that's where I grew up at, better known as Groove City, to people who really understand what Cambridge is. And uh, <laughs> Cambridge is, is a popping little town, man. You know, it, it's a lot of uh, artists there, a lot of artists there. There's an incredible amount of, of people who do music, um, produce, uh, sing, rap, you name it. So we had a lot of, of um, you know, the childhood was always – break dance crews and and you name it man it was mm-hmm. chapter one disco we would go to the to pine street go to the clubs and and do our thing so i'm, I'm saying that to say <laughs> it was always something to do it was clean fun it was it was crazy things that happened i mean it was the average you know childhood i guess but it was it was incredible everybody knows everybody so, mm-hmm. you know, really can't do too much without somebody going to tell your mom about it. So, you know, it's that type right. of place. So, it's but right. it's beautiful, man. You know, what can I say? Eastern Shore, seafood, good seafood, good people, man. And yeah. I was fortunate to have a good family. So, you know, we got we got a lot of good, um, we learned a lot of good lessons and we had a lot of good friends. So I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world, man. That's right. That's right, man. I had a ball, man. It's, it's you know, of course, I had the opportunity to live both in Baltimore City and over on the Eastern Shore because my grandfather had a farm over there, and, and we had to help Ooh. him out during the summer months after baseball season was over. And people hear hear me talk a lot about my my short baseball career. Yes, we had an opportunity to to play a lot of baseball on the Eastern Shore because because when the chores are done, you had a lot of they had a lot of daylight available, a lot of free time. And we played a lot of baseball, and the great and the great Harold Harold Baines is from Eastern Shore. We ever had an opportunity nice. to watch him play against you know against my uncle, and, and you know he was a big bat back then. People used to come from all over Eastern Shore to watch them guys go at it, man. A lot of sports. Awesome, right, right, awesome right. Childhood. So you were on the yeah, forum, you, were, you didn't you didn't you didn't have as much fun. You know, we didn't have the same experience, <laughs> but <laughs> you spent a lot of time working. See, yeah, we was working, man. Ah. Uh, Hot, hot down there too, man. Hot bull, but you, you, you appreciate. You know, that was my first job. You know, that was that was how I bought my bike. You know, when I when I when I returned to Baltimore, that's how you know I did a lot of exactly. things. You know, I made, made like farming. That's yes, right. right. So it's no job harder than than digging down in the sand with snakes and toads and mosquitoes and flies bigger Ooh. than butterflies. <laughs> well, I yeah. bet you wouldn't trade for nothing in the world, huh? Oh, man, it was a good experience. It made me the person I am today, man. I really appreciate that. And I had an opportunity to to also um, do a lot of time up in New York, Long Island, because my grandmother 
was up there. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it was, it was the East Coast was good to us, man. Now yeah, you ain't you didn't you didn't hang around long, William. You got out of town, man. You got out of Dodge. Now, now before you talk about your trip, now you mentioned that, that a lot of great artists came through Cambridge. Now I used to hear, you know, and I think I even saw myself James Brown in town, you know, shaking a leg. <laughs> Yeah, right there in those in the Elks Club, those places like that. I think uh, the Temptations and Gladys Knight and the Whispers and I think Red Fox traveled down there. I think everybody yeah, traveled to Cambridge. So tell us about that. Why was Cambridge so hot, man? I'm, I'm serious, man. It's called Groove City. You can't call it Cambridge. It's Groove City. It was Groove City. That popping. That popping. It was. You just never. It just. It was magical, man. It was always. You know, people on the on the playground playing basketball, barbecuing, radios mm-hmm. out. You know, it was that type of place. And so when it you was. came to visit, when you left, you would tell somebody about the place. Yeah. Hey, man, you got to go check this place out. It's just it's like that. And so yeah. when you know it, that word spreads out. It goes everywhere. And then there's people coming mm-hmm. from from everywhere. You know, it's just, it was just, it's like that, you know, mm-hmm. as became this was. So I believe that was the lore, the, the people and, and their love for life, you know. I think that was the lore that draw that drew a lot of people to Cambridge, you know. Yeah, so, man. yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's that's my opinion on it. In the nightlife, man, it's like people people probably ride through there during daytime and say, what nightlife are they talking about this little town? The nightlife was in – I used to bring my boys from the city, and we used to run to a lot of cats from D.C., Delaware, hanging out there, because the women was so – different man you know they had that, that southern bell type charm to them man. and of course i had to take names because you know i was related to a lot of them. my dad always said make sure you check out these if you get these names right here you can't you can't go out with them I was like, oh man that's kind of limiting you know okay okay so how about if we get down like the fifth cousin or something does that count <laughs> you know okay, so yeah. very fine women very fine women there and because you know i know you didn't have an opportunity to hang around long you know because you you know you left at the house but when i was was in my 20s hanging out there man that's when you really had an opportunity to have fun in the clubs like gentleman joe's and then you named right. streeters and then we right. traveled over to somerset yeah we had a ball yeah. right. sometimes you see this you see the same people that you saw in cambridge at somerset yeah that's the only thing man that's the only thing <laughs> yeah and 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 the night barber the barbecues at night you remember those Man, listen. Oh. I, I go back when I was there. We had Florida boy. We had it was it was he was selling chicken out of out of his house. So late night after the club, <laughs> you could go to Florida boys, get a chicken sandwich or or, or streeters and get some yak. You know, oh, so yeah. it was just you know it, it was just always kicking. You know, it was always something. So it was, it was yeah. nice. It was beautiful. I, I haven't right. been there in a long time, so I don't know if it's still. If they still doing the same things, but I, you know, I would imagine the spirit is still there. You know. Yeah, but you know, the drugs got pretty bad down there, so it knocked a lot of the players out the game. But you know, I'm sure some new players. But with the, you know, with the number of the plants closing up, and I think, you know, it's, it's not a lot of, um, you know, those kind of jobs out there now, unless you're working for the state or the government. So a lot of people did leave town to pursue other opportunities, like you. And that's what we're about to talk about now. Your right. trip. To L.A., man, what was that like, man? Eight hundred dollars in your pocket. It was, it was, it was a good decision when I was leaving, and the closer I got, I was like, okay, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you something: if you've never been to Los Angeles, eight hundred dollars go in like a blink of an eye, you know. So immediately when I got there, I was I was basically homeless and walking around on the streets and trying to figure everything out, you know, so it was, Wow. it, it, it wasn't a fairy tale that type of story with, with, you know, that, that I want to tell. It was, it, it got real, really fast, you know, mm. so definitely, definitely. But, you know, I, I learned a lot and I can say this. Um, I was young, so I was fresh out of high school. I got there just dreaming big, thinking as soon as I get somewhere, I'm going to make it, you know, and I'm going to blow up and everything going to be straight. But um, when you get there, reality set in. <laughs> yeah, it does. It, it, it gets different fast. But I was fortunate, man. God bless me. 
with, uh, you know, I ran into some good people that introduced me to a place called Covenant House, and mm-hmm. I went there, and it's for, like, homeless teens, and, you know, they uh, they housed us, and they, they fed us, and they, they allowed us to go look for jobs, and, you know, that's how I really got on my feet. So I was wow. able to go look for a job, and I found a job, and then I was able to get an apartment in Hollywood, got an apartment, and then I just kind of kept grinding from there, man, kept going, you know. Wow. It was like... Yeah, that's how it was, man. But uh, the homeless hmm. thing was real. <laughs> yeah, it was. So, when, so what happened? You 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 went over there on the bus with a guitar in your hand, or you traveled on? The, you know, you got a you flew over there. How did you How did you travel? Yeah, I was on Greyhound for four days, bro. <laughs> Whoa, four days with a duffel bag, man, and uh, <laughs> a, a book of raps. <laughs> <laughs> so you went over there as a rapper. Man, listen, hindsight is twenty twenty. I wasn't even a good rapper. I was just, I was just a rapper. You know what I mean? I was like, okay. I knew Hollywood was was hey, came real quick. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I was just there for four days, man. Yeah, yeah. Four days. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
it wasn't a game. Now, I wasn't around Jay and, and you know, running in, in those that particular circle. I spent a lot of time with Beehive, uh, and he managed groups that were that were under, um, you know, uh, the, the family or whatever. And mm-hmm. he was a serious dude, so he taught me a lot, got a lot of play up out of me. But while I was there, I had the opportunity to meet a gentleman named Matthew Chilowitz, and he was a he's a uh, this huge billionaire, uh, you know, a uh, realtor, or, or no, no, not realtor, uh, commercial building type of dude that, you know. A developer, like a developer. Developer, there you go. And so he was very wealthy, but he was he's a wild guy, so he spent a lot of money getting into the entertainment game. And when I, when I got with him, he uh, uh. took me under his wing. You know, and he started teaching me things about business, and he flew me all over the country, everywhere. Uh, he got me a deal mm-hmm. with Universal, a distribution deal. So I was young with a distribution deal. They moved me to Miami. I got down in Miami and started making making records. I brought probably 15 dudes from Cambridge, and mm-hmm. you know, we were all in the house down in Miami. We were just, it was it was crazy. A lot of the good artists that I'm talking about that I came up with went there with me so you know it was wow. that type of guy and from there you know that's when i got introduced to to the film game um mm-hmm. you know we would have budgets and i would be in charge of the budget and at the time you know you, you i didn't really know how to budget like i was supposed to so i spent a lot of money just doing whatever you know mm-hmm. and they said okay now make a music video with the budget that you was given and okay, that budget is gone. <laughs> you know, wow. get another one. Now you can't get another one. Make a music video, and you know we need mm. it by this time or that time. So what I did was I went and uh, got a couple cameras and the the editing equipment, and I started filming. Man, I started filming just like that's the story of my life. Just forced into wow. it. And um, but the filming thing, I was gifted. You know, wow. and, and I'm not tooting my own horn or any of that type mm-hmm. of stuff, but it came so natural and it was so, you know, it, that anointing was there. I, I saw yeah. what it was that I wanted to do. I knew the way it was supposed to look. I understood things that I didn't even know I understood, you know, because I didn't know all the technical mm-hmm. terms. But then when people would see it, they would just be like, excellent, good job, wonderful. Wow. Uh, that was my first one, you know. Mm-hmm. And so people would hire me from there. And I noticed that, okay, I'm making money filming, and I'm spending money in the music part, so mm. I'm going to go over here and start filming, you know? And so that's how that was kind of birthed. And when I came back to New York, um, I just spent a lot of time with the, with these incredible film editors and cinematographers, and I just wanted to absorb everything that they, mm. they knew so they just they spent days and weeks and months and before you know it just teaching me and teaching me and showing me like the real life stuff and mm. you know and that's how it all came to be you know I was dealing with the cameras that that you actually had to load film into and put yeah, your hands big boy camera yeah. you had to feel your way with the thirty five millimeter film and you had to process the film after you would film things and use the the measuring tape to, to get the distance, and then, you know, I went mm. into digital, and I just, you know, I, I love it, man. It's a passion, so that's yeah. what I kind of stuck with, and that's what I was good at, and that made me who I am today. That's how I was yeah. first, man. Wow, so you went you went the the old school route, man, dealing with film, man, <laughs> like because I know Spike Lee used yeah. to talk a lot about, you know, slicing Slicing and slicing film, and it, so editing was like all night, all day. I imagine not like now, you know, it's kind of a little easier now. You just point and click. Mm. Right, so right, right. Well, I was still. Yeah. I'm the, you're not gonna put me there. I'm not that old, but I did. I did a lot of pointing <laughs> and clicking. <laughs> I mean, it's just that I did it with a film camera. I like the film look, you know. Mm-hmm. So at the yeah. time, digital wasn't exactly where it is today. I mean, we didn't have the reds, and, and, you know, it wasn't 4K or any of that. So it, it, it's not as advanced. It wasn't as advanced then as it is today. So, yeah, you know, yeah. I would you know, look. I wanted that look to, to be the same thing that Spielberg had or, or mm-hmm. you know, who, one of the great filmmakers. And, you know, so that's why I learned it. And that's why I started 
you know, shooting the film. So, yeah, but yeah, right. yeah, still pointed and click, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Still All right, we click, talking. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, because, you know, I got in the digital, you know, when the Max and stuff got really big in the, in the early 90s, you know, when everything really started exploding with the Max and graphics was starting to hit the computers because the computers were starting to get a little bit more, well, not the PCs, but the, the Macs were getting big, and they were able to support those those software platforms, and you can really do mm. some stuff. Yeah, right, man. Right. All right, Vincent, right, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we're just going to take a music break real quick, introduce the artist, everybody have fell in love with. She called herself Kimberly. Kimberly, we're still waiting for her, her tour dates up here in the, on the East Coast. So check out everybody. This is a piece called I Want to Be Yours. And we're going to listen to this real quick. All right. And we talking cool. to William E. Benson, the third founding owner of Sector 7 Incorporated. And they are based around Atlanta, New York, and Beverly Hills, correct? Right. You got it. All right. All right. Hold tight, everybody. Here we go. Angel Sessions, and when I'm in town, I listen to Jerry Royce live, PositivePower21.org, where they play my favorite music. That's right. You tell them, Angel, we play your yeah, favorite like music. That. Yeah, you listen to that, that was Kimberly Kimberly, and before that, early in the show, you you heard uh, the Lintons, that'd be Louise and, and um, Linton Smith. With the first song okay. to open up the show, and then we had Angel Sessions, Jesus Coming Soon. So they all independents, William, all independents right here. Oh, you know I like yeah. that word. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, positive Power, 21.org. And, y'all, we talk, if you just joined us, we're talking to William E. Benston, the third founding owner, born and raised in Maryland, and he is the founder and owner of Sector 7 Incorporated, out there in Atlanta, the ATL, Beverly Hills, and New York City. And he's talking about how he got started in the game. And today, he is the man. That's right. Making his, making his um, I wouldn't say his debut, but he's making his mark. He's building his legacy. All right, bro, let's talk a little bit about Sector 7, man. This multimedia company specializing in the art of filmmaking, film editing, writing, music, sound, graphic design, and fashion. That's a lot. Right. A lot, right? Yeah, uh, tell us about that. (laughs) All right. Well, you know, Sector 7 is really a a brainchild of mine. You know, my years in the entertainment game kind of led me to a place where every day I would run into somebody that was really talented, whether it was fashion or music or acting, whatever the case may be. And to be honest, I ran into a lot of people that were just as talented or even more talented than uh, the people that we know in the industry. And, you know, they, they have the passion, they have the drive, but they, you know, it's just not enough room for all of them to get the opportunity to do, yeah. to express themselves. And so, you know, another thing was I got tired of doing 
you know, filming things that I just was that was just weighing heavy on my heart. You know, the mm-hmm. negativity, the negativity, or the the things that exploited women. And you know, I found myself filming these things and profiting off of these things, and I just couldn't do it anymore. You know, wow. So wow. Um, I stopped. I stopped, and I was like, you know, it's got to be a better way for people because. You can be talented and you can have something to say, but it is crazy when you have to change that around to say something negative or degrading or, or promoting mm-hmm. drugs or whatever for, for somebody to pay you attention. So I was like, nah, we're not going to do it like that. I know too many filmmakers, too many editors, too many. we we too strong. We're the mm-hmm. ones that make these things. We're too hot. Mm-hmm. We're too strong. So let me take the cats that I know, including myself, you know, and let's put something together. Let's let's get together, and um, we go. I'm gonna form this company, and as people come that we know are hot, let's let's mm-hmm. let's give them that platform. Let's give them a professional look. Let's let's give them professional filming jobs and recording sessions, and and you know, we, it's not just anybody. Got to have something with them now, but um. Let's give them a platform and let's let's get them out there. Let's make a way for them. I mean, we understand the game. And nowadays, in this digital mm-hmm. age, there's so much more that we can do than before. So the 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 whole key was getting seasoned professionals to believe in the vision and to say, mm-hmm. "Come on, let's take this chance. Let's uh, invest in talent and let's get it out there, man. Let's make it hot." And so mm-hmm. that's what Sector 7 is. That's how we, we birthed it. I mean, birthed Sector 7, and, and that's our mission, you know, to to introduce, you know, quality and talented people to the world, man. You know, yeah. it's nuts, you know, I guess. That's right. That's who we are. Because it's, and, it's, and it's powerful, man, that whole message, man. You know, I mean, the Sector 7 logo. Now, tell us a little bit about where Sector 7 come, come from, man. Where did that come from? As far as um, the vision, you mean? The, na- the name, the name. Oh, oh the, the brand, name, the brand. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. It's uh, it's a, it's it's a, a place set aside. Like, okay, the, the sector is uh, where people can go. It's a new way of doing things. The seven pretty much stands is just heavenly. It's God's way. It was dedicated. The company was dedicated to God from conception. So we decided that this is a new area that's dedicated to God, and we're going to do things in a positive way. We don't put out any negativity. We only speak life now. You know, somebody could say, I I dealt drugs, and this is what it did to me, and, you know, this is what I learned from it. But mm-hmm. it's educational, and it, it, but we don't glorify anything. We won't do any of that. Somebody can have a line of clothes, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's tasteful when they're good, and, you know, they may not have an opportunity, so we give them that platform. But that's where the name Sector 7 came from. It just it popped in my head one day, and when it popped in my head, it's funny because I turned on the TV, and then I heard someone say it right after it popped in my head on television, wow. and it's not a normal name that I heard all the time. So I was like, I right, I guess that's what you're supposed to call it. So we're going to get down with it. You know, to me, right. that was a confirmation. And so I just ran with it, bro. That's how, that's how the <laughs> name came, you know. I know. And people, and people always asking, you know, when they know you're a spiritual person, they're going to they gonna ask you, um, what does uh, Sector 7 mean? What, what does that 7 mean? You You have to break it down. <laughs> For the right, right, right. all scripture like and everything it, that's been happening to me about you know positive power 21 and i remember when i came up with that name i had already had positive power because it was my newsletter when i was you know working with the government and i used that to motivate my staff because they were like down in the dump before i got there and right. um 21 was always my favorite number of course i looked it up first cause i said well, let me look it up first make sure it stands for something good before um the spiritual people get me, you know. So it's, right. it's what it is, you know. It's that road, man. So I, I, I have it all down packed now. I know what it is. But that is awesome, bro. Sector seven, man. Meet sector seven. All right. Now your whole path is, is a story yourself, man. It's just so exciting. That, that'd be awesome if somebody made that a HBO series of some sort or anything for the internet because of course you guys have embraced the internet like early i was telling you how i didn't know these content creators would was all over youtube like they call themselves youtubers creators 
content makers, you name it. And I talked to you and I talked to your man, Kenneth, and I understand you guys about to release a big, big film project, and we're so excited, man. We want to hear about that right now. Ah, that's it. <laughs> film project. It has begun the awakening. Yeah, that's that's the that's the project. That's our first um, project that we're launching from Sector 7. It's a um, docufilm that investigates factual occurrences taking place around the world, but, you know, they're never being brought to light. It's dealing with the physical and spiritual and and um, just just the physical phenomenon that's going on around the world really doesn't get a lot of play. And the incredible thing is a great deal of it lines up with what the Bible said would take place. So, and we didn't even, we just stumbled upon that. So it wasn't mm. even, you know, that wasn't the intent when we when we went into it. We were just trying to figure out, okay, what questions do people want to know the answers to? Real questions, and then let's let's go into that. So you know, that's that's it has begun. We spent four years making the film, man. Mm. Wow, that's four a long years, time, man. man. Yeah, that's man. A long time. And, a lot of and then you have that is a long time. Now, you, I, 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 you guys threw some names out there, some 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 big Hollywood, I guess, some producers, some people putting their money up for the project. How interesting is that that you're able to reach in your pocket and pull some friends out to help you with the project? Was now was that is that something that happened? You you called on some friends to help you get launch this project. Well, the launching. Um Really, really, we we did, we spent four years investigating, putting the project together, and after it was all done, we just called on the people that we we knew, and um, it wasn't really to get money from them, but it was to help us spread the word. We we realized that by the end of this film, that we had something that was important, something that mm. uh, that really needed to be seen, and it had we had to first figure out how are we going to separate what we have here from all of the fluff that people have been just bombarded with, you know, every day on the Internet or on television that say, you know, we have whatever. You know, you got to break that. So we use our relationships in that way. And, um, you know, we know a lot of television cats, radio cats, and, um, you know, that's the way we say we're going to work this project. And we ended up um, – uh, taking it to a place where today it's a worldwide movie night that's going to take mm. place in seven different countries, you know, um, uh, many different languages, and it's just expanding all the time. So it, it's it's incredible, man. It's it's not it's wow. out of control, you know. It's out of control, so it's being translated yeah. into different languages, and it's growing because it, it taps into the things that everybody is wondering about. It, it, mm-hmm. You know, it, it deals with questions that all of us have, you know, and so it's fascinating to everyone. And they really, it's not an interview form where you just sit down and talk to someone. You actually see the footage of these things, and so that's what's incredible. You know, you, you see it with your own eyes, so you don't question it. It's fact-based, you know. Mm. Yeah, man, we can't wait. We can't wait. So who's the target audience for for, for this film? Everybody. <laughs> everybody. Any, everybody. Any, man, the non-believers and the believers. Listen, listen man. Atheists, uh, because it's facts. And, and instead of people walking around in ignorance or just trying to defend something, you know, their team, their home team, and, and not really opening their eyes up to what the, the actual facts are, because when, you, when you're able to deal with the reality of things, then you educate yourself. You can speak on yeah. things. You, you, can, you can, you know, gauge your beliefs and understand that or am, am I accurate in what I'm believing and what I accept is true. And so, um, you know, it, it, it's everybody, man. And I don't even, yeah, I'm not right. even saying that because I just want to say that, but I think this is, that's the real answer to that question. Everybody. I don't know so, nobody it doesn't pertain to. <laughs> so, William, so you're saying this movie, this movie is super special? It's going to make it a is, difference? Man. It is, and it really will make a difference because people are going to talk for the simple fact that it's reality-based, man. You know, mm-hmm. when you see – this isn't scripted. This, is, this isn't Hollywood, man. So when you see uh, uh, 
things that, that you say, hold on, how could that happen? That's not mm. that's outside of the laws of physics. How could that mm. take place? Is that real? That's going to prompt you to go look that event up or that occurrence up. And when you look it up and find out it truly took place and, and thousands of people witnessed it, you know, and it happened over and over and over, and then you mm. realize the time patterns that it happened, and then you realize that, hold on, right after this took place, that took place. And then when you see it with your own eyes and, and we go even further, we give a study guide with the, with the movie. So we did a lot of study, and then we say, now, after you look that up, you want your mind blown, look this up. And so mm. now you go look that up, independent study now. It's not us trying to be opinionated and tell you what we came up with. It's independent study. So now you go look that up. And then you understand, whoa, see, that's what mm. happens when it has begun. You get that whoa factor. It blows your mind, mm. man. It blows your mind. Uh -oh. And that's what I wanted to see as a consumer. Man, blow my mind with something, bro. That's right. So wow me. Yeah. yeah. Wow me, man. I dare that's you. Right. And so that's right. we that's what we were going after. But by the end of the movie, we all sat mm. down, man. We all sat down and we were just like, "What? What? What is this, man? What mm. in the world have we uncovered?" Mm. You know. Mm. And so that's that's it, man. It's gonna take on a little. All right, and this is a, this is a two part question. Now, this doesn't sound like a two hour movie. And and how is it going to be available? How how are we going to get it? When are we going to know that it's available and we're there for movie night? Well. I got you, bro. Right now, what, we, what we're doing is we are establishing different churches, different organizations, individuals, nonprofits, whatever, uh, to grab onto this because it deals with so much subject matter that it seems like it's something in it that pertains to almost everybody, every group or individual or whatever. So we're reaching out to all of these people now. As you can imagine, it takes a little while to orchestrate this thing on a worldwide level. You know, mm -hmm. so Global. to be, yeah, so uh, to begin the process, what we're doing is we're having people go online to www.itasbegunthemovie.com, and you can register for either a movie night to to be a sponsor, to to take part in some way, shape, or form. You know, and um, and, and we get all of those places. But that's it goes in phases. You know, so it's not just a release. This type of project is epic, so it has to take, uh, it has to come together in phases. So the first phase is to get all of the places together that are going to show this movie. You know, because it's six parts. It's, it's six DVDs, man. It's not just one wow. disc. And all of them deal with certain things, certain subject matters. So you watch disc one, and then you, of course, go to two and three, and it comes with the soundtrack. That I don't even want to tell you how that thing came about, but Kevin K.O. Case, <laughs> who's a super producer, man, he created a soundtrack. And when I tell you, now I've, I've heard the whole soundtrack, but when I tell you, you've never heard anything like this. Now, mm. anybody that knows K.O. understands that the brother is is beyond gifted with music, you know. Mm. But with this, he outdid himself, man. Uh -oh. Phenomenal, uh -oh. phenomenal album, and it and it doesn't. It's not just regular songs. It's songs that that deals with pride and and failing marriages and things. So you can go online because I'm not going to do it any justice just talking about it. But you can go online um, at, at sector 7 inc dot com and listen to some of the snippets, and you know you it's going to blow your mind. Yeah, said all that to say, wait. it's a well rounded project, man, and it's a book that comes with it that talks about the whole four-year journey and all of the incredible things that took place on its mm. life-changing things, man. It brought a lot of us closer to, you know, to God. I hate to just, you know, <laughs> it, spoiler alert, but, yeah, man, it is, man. It really is. You had is, a big man. team. So, so you had a pretty big team, a um, production team that worked on this? No, we had a we had a. A good team, man. We, you know, we started off and along a four-year journey when you really don't, it's not a budget for it. It's a labor of love. You know, people yeah. come and go, you know, so a lot of people, you know, were there for a season. Some people were there for the for duration and a, just a couple. And, and then the team that we have today, they're the team that God put in place to launch this whole thing. And, and 
you know, it, they're an incredible bunch of people. I couldn't even put it together if I wanted to, you know. Yeah. So it's just a blessing, you know. It really is. Right. Amen. Amen. Now I'm, I want to ask. I want to. I know you. I know you're a busy man, William. We can talk to you all night, man. Because I mean, when someone come out of mainstream and they d- decide to go under their own independent company and and still, you know, because I, I think the whole bottom line is you're trying to make a real impact, a positive impact in the world. Um, we want to know what happened because you mentioned a little bit what happened that you you said you had enough and. You know, did God, I mean, some people say God been, was calling on them for a long time and it, and then things were happening and they had no choice but just drop what they were doing and join the team. What happened with you, man? Something happened. Yeah, something definitely happened, man. You know, um, I, I, I did a movie for, like, probably one of the biggest organ, music organizations on earth, and I was the only one allowed to film them and, I was with them on tour, backstage, everything. Uh, we got into a little dispute over contracts, ended up losing a, a lot of time, money, and energy. And I sat down for a minute, man, because, you know, the entertainment game can be good and it can be bad, it can be stressful. I sat down for a minute. Uh, when I sat down, I, w- I think I was watching television on just a random channel and T.D. Jakes was on and he started saying things and I started, like, agreeing like, yeah, that's deep, that's deep. One day, I um, I think I was at the computer. I was like, I, you know, it brought on the question. I never, won, I never got to know who Jesus is or God is, for that matter. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's crazy. So mm-hmm. being who I am, I just went online and started investigating and looking. I was there for three days straight, man, just mm-hmm. looking and trying to figure it out. So what ended up happening was, you know, at the time, people would come and they'd be like, yo, what are you doing? You know, you're not taking on any video jobs. You're not doing anything. You're just in the house at the computer looking up Jesus. What's going on with you? you know? <laughs> and so wow. they, they thought I was losing it because, you know, I had lost a lot of money in this deal that went crazy. Mm-hmm. I wasn't pursuing the deal, so lawyers would call it, and I wouldn't answer the calls. Family was tripping, and I'm not listening to them. So mm-hmm. um, because these things, I'm fascinated with the information I'm finding, and so I sat back. And I said, um, whoa, am I tripping? Am I going cuckoo or what's going on? And I said, God, is this, are you real? Are you here? Is this, do you exist? And as soon as I said that, a text hit my phone and said, I am here. You know, mm. and uh, it wasn't a number. It wasn't nothing um, attached to it. It was just, I am here. It said, mm. uh, uh, the reduction of a, the universe to a single being and the expansion from a single being even to God, this is love. That was the message. And from there, I've been, I was like, I guess I, you can't get a better answer than that. That's real. And, you know, I've been, I've been all in ever since, bro. Man, I got chills oh, on that story, man. Whoa. Oh, man, you ain't heard nothing yet. You ain't heard nothing yes. yet. I mean, really, in the pursuit of this, Man, so many things happen supernatural and crazy. I mean, just mind blowing, man. It just, it's unbelievable, man. Unbelievable, you know. So the so. great, so the great I am came a calling for William, William yeah, Benson the third. Yeah, man. Definitely did, man. Because I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil your story. You know how I ended up turning into worldwide ministries, but I was having a ball like that too, man. <laughs> <laughs> and next thing I know. I was like, how did Worldwide Ministries get to the back of Worldwide? I, I like being Jerry Bush Live Worldwide. You know what I mean? Look, all I asked for was a was a new best friend to talk about podcasts with. And next thing, I know he's sending me a pastor. <laughs> and then a whole bunch of them started coming. A whole lot of them. I couldn't talk. I was like, oh, my God. They calling me up now. <laughs> Wow, wow. All right, man, we're going to take a quick break, man. Just let you catch your win. And then um, we want you to give us your final thoughts. You know, anything else you think we need to know of your projects coming up? And you can close this out, man. And we definitely got to have you, have you guys back and, and, and anybody part of your executive team to continue the story. Because I know the story goes on, man. I oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. All right. <laughs> 
All right, let's hear a tune from my man Mark Staggers out of Washington, D.C. Everybody say he sounds like Luther. That's right, Luther took over his voice box. Check him out, so amazing. Now, we're going to play Bring Me Back. I think this is a piece he wrote himself. Um, Bring Me Back out of D.C., Mark Staggers. Tanika Gonzalez, open word poet. Whenever I'm online, I'm always listening to Jerry Royce Live. You can find Jerry on www.speaker.com. Positive Power 21. All right. You tell them, Tanika, you only listen to Jerry Royce Live worldwide. And we're talking to William E. Benston the third. A man is walking with God, the great I am, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I know the story. <laughs> man, oh man, when he say he's taking over, he's taking over. You seek him, you will find him. So I know your story, brother. I know that walk. All right, William, anything we need to know, man, before we close out the show, brother? Appreciate you being here, man, and, you know, what you're doing with Tanika. She's, you got that awesome talent over there in Sector 7. That is exciting times, and good yeah. for you, man. I got to handle a little Let's... business here for my manager here at Explode. But uh, we go to, uh, you can go to www.sector7inc.com and get all the information on the company. And for the movie, it has begun. You can go to www.ithasbegunthemovie.com, you know, and you can get tons of information on the movie. I also want people to visit uh, bridgethegap.org, you know, this bridge, D-A, gap.org, and that's a company, a nonprofit organization that Kevin K. O. Cates has. He spent, you know, uh, four or five years and about a million dollars of his money to come up with a curriculum and bridge the gap. And what it is is a textbook, Bridge the Gap, that deals with the social and emotional needs that our inner city youth face and just youth, period, really, bullying, uh, losing a loved one, uh, drug-addicted families, and whatever the case may be, because a lot of people in these communities, they kids, they deal with these issues in real life, but they don't have a they don't have anything that's educating them on it. And uh, mm-hmm. curriculum, yeah, like he did six hundred some odd songs, man, and it explains wow. it's, it's incredible. But it explains everything from from 
math and history to physics or whatever, man. I mean, it touches on everything. Mm. It's incredible. So before that I is. do the injustice and start talking crazy, everybody, please, you know, let's support that brother because it's incredibly powerful and positive, and, you know, we're all in with him 100%. After I yeah. saw it, I was blown away, and I was like, brother, that will that's something that will make a difference. So right. we definitely, and, you know, it's, you got to see it for yourself. So What's that bridge, website again? Yeah, www.bridgethedagap.org. And, um, and, oh, let me see, Facebook, it has begun the movie, and at it has begun movie for Twitter. And, uh, you know, that's all the handles, and that's how to get in touch with us. That's how you find out more about the project, including Bridge the Gap, the movie, and Sector 7. So, you know, just come out and support and see what we're doing. Understand who we are, and and you know I think everybody is really going to be impressed and get involved with the uh, movements that we're making. So yeah, that's, that's where I'm at with it, bro. All right, and and and, and I want you to hold a line a little bit too, Brian, because I want to I want to find if I can get a trailer from you, so uh, we can run that for you also, man. So don't hang up. Yeah. To finish the show out, but. Look, man, man, you guys doing some exciting things, and uh, we're gonna have all this right down the landing page so people can hit it up, bridge the gap. dot org. It has begun. dot com and sector seven inc. dot com. Check them all it out. It has begun. It has begun. The movie. dot com. Oh, the movie. Oh, oh, the movie. Yeah, you gonna send them on a chase? They gonna be mad at you, Jerry. Yeah, <laughs> man. Cause I was gonna say it has begun the film. So it has begun <laughs> the movie. I mean? All right. Yeah, man. <laughs> Got too movie, much information. Baby. There you yeah. go. Yeah. And it was one other thing. I, I, okay, can people find movie trails out there on YouTube right now and Vimeo? Where are you guys going to stream it from? That's my big question. Where is the stream? Oh, yeah, from? we're going to. Uh, we got a little. And I don't know all of this because that's not my job. But to do, as far as the streaming company, I know that we're looking into partnering up with people like Netflix and, and a couple other cats but i think that's a little bit and down the road in phase two once we establish mm -hmm. um all of our, our leg work and groundwork um i think that's the next big thing so yeah i love me some netflix man <laughs> as i got that's what happened that was what i was doing before this started i was watching everything on netflix Really? Yeah, I was home. Yeah, man, um, the government is shut down, man. So I was home like straight maybe 14, 15 days, and I was just marathoning it, man. I was watching Orange and Black, The League, you name it. <laughs> it was ridiculous <laughs> stuff. It stuff I don't even look at no more. See, yeah, man, it got you me, you man. Have, you could have ordered the, uh, the, the first disc, man. The first disc is free, by the way. You know what I mean? Ooh, so you just go online yeah. and register, and you get the first disc for free. So, so it's already you know, now. So it's already. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. It just comes straight. It, it, you download it. You, it comes straight to you, and you can start watching it. And from there, it's a wrap. You know, you're going to tell everybody. So Right now. Right. They could do that right now. Okay, on, so they man. on you know seven. We down, man. We right now people, man. We right now people. Yeah. So, so, it, yeah, it, so it has begun. The movie has the, the free download right now. Right yeah, but now. you got to register, man. You got to do some things. Okay. You got to show some love, you know, because we need support, and we need to show that we have right. support, and that's what we're doing for the people that support us. You know, we're giving back. Hmm. So that's, right. that's, our, that's the exchange. That's what that looks like there. So, All right, yes. I got to get, I gotta, I gotta get Kenneth to send me something fancy so I can plug it on the link then, man, because I have a <laughs> – it's funny, but I actually have a website out there that's been out there for years, man. It just attracts people like a mag. I made it a billboard. So I'm gonna have to get okay. that out there, man. I'm gonna have to get um Kenneth to send me a flyer for it, man. My my, um, my it, billboard. Bro. Yeah. Don't it. forget, y'all. Check out my my billboard. Is that is that the Rock News Magazine separated by half? If you type in the Rock News Magazine, it come right up. It's been out there. It's actually based out of Cambridge and um Easton. Oh wow! <laughs> it's That's out, crazy. Yeah, it's been out there since 2002, something like that. I know it's been a long time. That thing attract. It's just, it gets like. Ten, sometimes twenty thousand people visit a week. Ridiculous numbers. So check it out, everybody. It's, it's old, dated stuff, but it's our archives. It's my dad's legacy. So check it out, the rocknewsmagazine dot com, and it's going to have the flyer. It has begun the movie. In case you forget, you can find right, it right, over right, the rock. Right. Yeah, because people and, people got uh, a lot on their mind. 
And Jerry, let me let me just give a let me give a shout out to you see I call it a shout out. See how we do. Um to yeah. my team, uh, you know, Kenneth and Tanika and and Tiffany and all of all Patricia, all of the good people, uh Brittany, uh, all of them, man. I love y'all, man. It's all good. Kenneth has the What's, What's Positive magazine on Facebook. Y'all need to check that out and support it. It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, all of these people are doing wonderful and incredible things. EQ out of Dallas. Um, you know, so it's, it's just it's a good thing, man, to have good people. Um, and I want you guys to check out the projects that are coming when we finish this one. Uh, we have a movie that's going, that we're about to film on sex trafficking out mm-hmm. of Atlanta that's, that's extremely powerful. So, Everybody just stay tuned. We're about to do some incredible right. things. Yeah, I was going to ask you about Destiny. Is it yeah. Destiny from the Light to the Night? So that, you guys just working on that one. That's in production. Oh, yeah, Destiny. Oh, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to say hello to Carrie. The incredible <laughs> Carrie, man. I can't believe I didn't say Carrie. <laughs> Carrie, I'm going to say her name four times. Carrie, 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 Carrie. Carrie. You know, uh, yeah, man, because she, she's the backbone, man. But um, Destiny uh, is is a movie um, that we're going to film in Atlanta is based on a real life situation from a lady who was was thrown into the world of sex trafficking and strip clubs and you know it 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 it's the real thing what it's really like what she really experienced and I thought it you know I only know the movie side of sex trafficking mm-hmm. but when I heard uh, the real story I was bro I was yeah. blown away I mm. could not believe yeah that is crazy. Here. Yeah. I could not believe it, man. So it's 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 incredible. I hope I answered your question, man, because I, it, you know, I don't really know. Yeah, yeah, bro. Like I've seen some, I've seen some stuff out there on that on Netflix that blew my mind. So I can just imagine what she's gonna show us. Her story, man. Nothing like what she's telling you, bro. Nothing Whoa. like she Whoa. she she experienced the the real real. You know, I, and mm. I'm not put anybody else down with the with the experience, but she was. She was one of the top chicks in it, and so her story was way different, and it went through levels, man, that you, whoo, but yeah, that's mm. coming, so, you know, yeah. it's all good. And you got, and, and tell us a little bit about Black Bag before you go. Oh, uh, Black Bag is, is one of our, our uh, big projects. Black Bag is a feature film. It's going to be like, you know, huge, like Boys in the Hood, one of those type of films that come out, but it's about the power of love. A young man um, finds a bag in the city, and um, the contents inside of the bag, or everybody around the world wants it. There's some special stuff in that bag. He doesn't even know he has it. Some mm-hmm. really bad people end up kidnapping his uh, sister, and that's all he really has. And so they give him 48 hours to return the bag, or they're going to you know, do some horrible things to his sister. And he finds out through an FBI agent that... Um, that they're going to do it anyway. So this young man goes from being just a regular kid to conjuring up the power to think and use his abilities to figure things out to get his sister back. And the way he goes about it is just we all have that inside of us, but sometimes it takes, you know, something incredible to happen for us to tap deep in, into the resources of our brain or whatever you want to call it to bring something out that's in us that we all possess and that's what he brought out and he turns into this incredible like type of dude to get his sister back because he you know she he loves her man he loves her Mm. and so i say it's about the power of love but he goes on an incredible journey man it's non-stop action from the beginning to the end non-stop man i bet i bet so and and it's going to be an incredible cast of actors. You know, it's like uh, when uh, Spike Lee did Do the Right Thing. Not Do the Right Thing. What was the first movie? Uh, 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 oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, he had, but just... that he had the butt in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do the Right Thing. Some one of those, you know, and he had a star-studded cast and all of them were just good actors. That's what this mm. type of movie is, man. It's a good story with good actors. And um, it's going to blow your mind, man. So those are the first two things, and we're still going to do auditions. We're, we're grabbing people to do the soundtrack, to do scoring, to be in the movie. So it's all good, man. Yeah. And then last, last but least, you got a, a fly on here, The Rise of Young Money. Is that a, that's yeah, a yeah, project yeah. in the works? 
No, yeah. no, nah, nah, that's right. something that I finished a long time ago, man. And um, you know, it's just a, it's just going to be after it gets a million hits, it's going to be a free viewing. So when wow. a million people register for the movie, they get to watch it for free. You know, hmm. um, and that's that's just that's promotions. You know, that's promotions. Yeah. But a lot of people, you know, wonder about the music industry and and what it's really like. And so, you know, it answers those questions. You know, I do things, I don't do the watered-down version, and that's what I think I'm going to be known for. I I, I do it the way you want to hear it, you know, the way I would want to hear it if I was back home, not, mm-hmm. you know, let's be politically correct and let's do it this man. Go ahead with that, man. That ain't how it go down. This is how mm-hmm. it really go down, you know. So if you're living like that or you do it, then, then that's what, what they're going to see. So that's right. That's well, you, see, you're from and, Maryland. And, you can't help it, man. Oh, You're from bro. Maryland, man. Just like when those dudes produced The Wire and, and Homicide oh, and The Corner. And real people don't stuff. want that cookie-cutter, watered-down stuff, man. They want to know uh, what's real, man, what's really going on, what's really good, and that's what I give. I get a lot of heat for it, but, you know, it is what it is, man. <laughs> it is what it is. No. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's right, man. Bring You know, because you're from Maryland, man. You know what people want. When you, when you grew up in Maryland, you got strong urban cities like D.C., Baltimore, and then right around the corner from Delaware, see for Delaware. You know, the homies, the homies gonna be looking at you, you funny man. You come out with some watered down stuff. Man, my <laughs> girls ain't gonna let nothing happen to me, man. <laughs> I hear you. I hear crazy, you. Man, they ain't gonna let nothing go down, man. They got my back, so I'm good. I don't worry about nothing. The father got me. You said do what's right, right and, and always tell the truth. And so I, I'm not even about that lying thing, man. Let's tell the truth. And expose and let's start some healing, you know? Let's get Amen. it done. That's you right. Know? Let's do this thing. All right, William, man, I'm not going to take a, a, a commercial break. I'm going to let you go ahead and give us your final thoughts on tonight's show, man. And then we'll end the show. We appreciate you, though, bro. Come out here. Absolutely. Absolutely. I appreciate that. I think my final thoughts are this. Um, you know, it's been a long journey. I learned a lot in my life. And what I really learned is we have a lot of people who are suffering in our communities, who are struggling. And, you know, we're going further and further away from the way God intended for us to live and to love each other and to be. And that's why our communities are falling apart and our children are are getting more and more disconnected and spending time in in, in penitentiaries and jails. And, you know, it's getting out of hand, but it's not over. It's not over Like any mistake, you can realize a mistake and you can come together and you can fix it. And we can do this just in a generation or two. We can turn these things around, but we've got to to brush off the belief that it can't be done, that it's too big, it's too – and we got to start, man. We got to start because when we start, that's going to lead people to to get involved. And when people get involved, that's going to change, you know, uh, the next step and then the next step will affect the following step. And before you know it, man, you know, we're going to be back on the track where we barbecuing and, and disciplining each other kids and watching mm-hmm. over our, our, our families, man. Let's get back to that. You know, it, it was a beautiful right. thing because the alternative is bleak, you know. So um, let's do it, man. And with this Bridge the Gap thing, my brother told me today, listen, we the new civil rights, bro. We the mm-hmm. new civil rights. Let's take it on. Let's right. not make it about the money. Let's make it about the love. And that's, that's right. why I love that dude, man. Kevin K.O. Case, that's my soldier, bro. He's serious about this thing, man. Serious about mm-hmm. it. And that's why we got to support people like that, bro. That's because right. We need him here, man. On. So he can, yeah, we want him, man. Bring him on, man. We want him to tell man, his bro, story, as man. This is good as done. That's just a phone call, man. That's as good yeah, as done. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. God, God is good. God is Kenneth. <laughs> God yeah, is good. Yeah, that's, man. And, and, and you know what? I'm going to tell you this last thing. Uh, Jerry, we even got something for the kids, man. We got Kids Corner. Um, and and it's, I never believed in the kids being in the same rooms as the adults and auditions and all that is too much, man. So for the kids that want to, you know, if, you got, if your child can sing, act, dance, do any of that stuff, man, we, got, we do all that for the kids in a way where oh, wow. there's no pressure. Man. We teach them. You know, so they don't just come in, audition, and leave for a role or whatever. No, but we show them, this is what we want you to work on. This is what we can do for you. This is how you need to sing. This is what's in a safe atmosphere, man. 
mm-hmm. where, you know, it, and it should be conducive to a way a kid's energy and, and innocence, and, and that's what we believe. So Kids Corner, support that. You, it's on sector7inc.com. Go to it if you got a child that's talented and, you you, you know, you don't want to get caught up in the craziness of, of, of the career, I mean, the entertainment game, but you, you want to support your child. Kids Corner is for you, man. So, you know, we have that as well. And it's a beautiful yeah, thing. That's one of the things we're most proud of, bro. Yeah, yeah. Now, 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 William. Before you go, man. Now, I think you. I think the listeners have an opportunity to to sign up to Sector Seven, to register. You know. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, we we do what's called um cards, man. So we have Sector Seven cards, and we have them in different ways. Like some people. You know, they're serious entertainers, and they need serious music videos, and or they may want to film a reality pilot show type of thing. You know, we do all of that. And we also have people that, and we have, we have, um, but they may not have the money to do it, the, you know, the, the way that they need to do it. So what we do is say, listen, this is the price. We're going to do it the right way. And um, we're going to work it out. We're going to make it happen. And that's what it's really about because these people have great ideas. And it goes all the way down to a $25 card where you just get super discounts on everything from studio sessions to uh, uh, we call you when it's a a casting going on. And and if you can't Mm. make it, then, you know, some people work, man. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Here's the side. Send in your YouTube thing and somebody going to get you a call, man. Let's wow. do this, you know. So yeah, yeah man. But yeah, you, know, you know, the benefit from that type of stuff, you gotta be a part of Sector Seven. So That's right. you go online, yeah. you register, and then we put you in the mix with a lot of things. And I'm gonna tell you, this the incredible thing: we don't just put you with crazy producers or whatever. You know, it's platinum mm-hmm. producers, hot producers. So you get real beats, and not beats that 30 other people got. You know, they're made specifically for you. You talk to a representative that here's what it is that you want to do, and they make a plan that's tailored exactly and specifically for you. You don't have to go try to figure out who's going to be my agent or who's going to be this. You know, we say, now nah, you're going to talk to this person, that person, and that person, and then you're going to be where you want to be at the end of the day. Ah, that's hot. Yeah. That is, that is. <laughs> that's man. what I needed when I was in that Los is. Angeles, man. <laughs> So, so they don't have to be part of like the actors guild or anything like that. Oh, man, they don't. Do all that. Man, I don't, man, we are the actors guild. We talk. Y'all the actors yeah, guild. That's what I'm talking I don't even about. Like that, but nah, bro, listen, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people don't even understand in the communities that we're from what all of that is. They just have a talent, mm-hmm. and you know, this is the first step to even to to nurture that talent and and to show them the right way and teach them the language and the, you know to cultivate all of that. And if they yeah. choose so, then they can kind of move or graduate and go in that direction. It's their choice. But a lot of these people live in day-to-day, man, and um, they don't have time for, you know, a four-year college or, or two years to learn. So we teach them as well. Listen, here's how you work a camera. You know, here's how this. Right. And so and now you got now you learn something, now you can go back and do something with it. And the people that are recording music, man, ah, it's so much, man. We record the music yeah, quickly. Yeah. We make the videos, we put it out, and we make sure you get paid, you know. Mm. So now you're going back home, millions of people done seen you, and whoever likes you can spend 99 cents or a dollar or whatever your album is, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. your single is, you get paid. That's a beautiful right. thing. I did it. Now, can way. they do that? I was going to say, can they do that in in um, New York as well? Because I know Atlanta's a little further away for us people that's f- closer to the East Coast. Can they do the same thing in New York? See, let me tell you something, man. You can do it if you're in ten buck two, and um, you know you 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 don't know anybody, and you're in a small little town and nobody. That's what we made Sector Seven for. It's for the dreamers. Uh, so you, you wake up and you say, man, I got a song inside of me, but I don't know what to do. I'm far away but God is giving me something, man, call mm-hmm. Sector 7, man, and we're going to figure it out together. You know, we're going to see the music. We're going to make sure that it get recorded, and uh, we're going to keep it moving, man. We're going to show mm-hmm. you what to do and how to do it. We're going to let you know if you're talented or if you're wasting your time. I mean, just to be blunt, you know, and mm-hmm. we're gonna, it's going to be done the right way, man. It's going to be done the man. right way. And I don't let mean me. waste your time, like, don't do yeah. that. But I mean, like, let me pour this into you now. Try again. Try again because right. you're not ready right now, you know? Well, I'm going to ask this question. 
All right, this is for the people who who are who are in the stage plays and screenwriters. You, you looking at that scripts? You looking at scripts? Hey, bro, it's every it's entertainment. Period. That's the beautiful thing Ooh. about Sector Seven, and it's not just me. This is what I want the world to understand: is seasoned professionals in every field, man. We just connected with each other. You know, I uh-huh. I use my brainchild that the Lord gave me, but I call up my man and and I say, listen. You know, this dude had a, has a screenplay that's incredible, you know, or a, a script or whatever, you know, or a stage play. Mm-hmm. And then um, they say, okay, let's, uh, let me look at Green it. Light. Let's see what we yeah. got, you know, and then they go from there. And now people that want to be in play, you know, they all got in touch with us. So we say, okay, is a play going on over here, you know? audition now you can't drive all the way over there you don't have the money for it so listen make this youtube thing here's what you're going to do here's how we need you to do it and then we take it and we don't just throw it on the floor man we make sure that we look at every single one man every single wow. one we got a team of people that that's all they do you know we mm. take people's careers serious man because think about this man think about how many songs we never got to hear how many mm. plays we never got to see how many uh, 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 actors or actresses that never got a chance to do what God gave them because they got frustrated and gave up because they got to run around or people try to, you know, the young ladies that were going to the studio that had a song in their heart, they got hit on so much that they just couldn't do it anymore. Or they just, you understand what I mean? That's not yeah. the experience that people should have, man. I don't believe that, man. I think that it should be a positive, powerful thing. And us as men, we need to create an atmosphere that is proactive to people who have a vision and a dream, you know, that, right. and we, we came before them, so it's our responsibility to, to pave the way. That's what we do, man. This is kind of I hear you preaching. That's a sermon now. I apologize, man. I'm great. I can hear you. No. I'm about to stand up and walk around. I hear you. I hear you. Wait, nothing wrong with that. But that's what you. That's what positive power all about, man. Bringing the positive messages, man, that God has instilled in us, man. There ain't nothing wrong. I mean, people got pipe dreams, man, that they think would never happen. You should give them hope. Give them hope. Oh, that's all they want, you know. Give them hope and a boat and a drive, bro. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Amen. All right, man. Let me let me let you go, man. I gotta get ready for. Oh, Sabrina Williams out there in Vegas, man, before she send Roy Jones Jr. to beat me up, because I'm not <laughs> ready for her show. <laughs> Let me get they know about Bridge the Gap, too, so tell them it's all good. Love. That's right. So don't forget about it, everybody. So we will have everything out there on the landing page, because William did drop a lot of a lot of good, good knowledge on us today. And uh, we can make a difference in our life and someone else's life at the same time. All right, William, I tell them all the time, man, if they want to hear the good stuff, man, the real good stuff, they got to listen to Positive Power 21.org, the Jerry Woods Live. On uh, Spreaker, don't forget about Spreaker Radio. Over 4.8 million people out there cruising live, that's right, looking for good content. So if you're a podcast and you're looking to join a network, a good network for good people like my team, come on out. Check us out. We will stream you with our program and um, get people to fall in love with you. Okay? All right, y'all. I'm Joy Royce Live. I'm Worldwide. Thank you for tuning in to Joy Royce Hold tight, Live. Hold tight, William. Or and Twitter.com forward slash Positive Power 21. This is a Royce Enterprises production. And don't forget about replay on Facebook.com forward slash Joy Royce Live. All right, y'all. Y'all stay awesome all week long. That's a